I am indeed humbled and honored to be awarded a doctor's degree from such an outstanding university. I have a strong faith in God, and I don't know how people live without it. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know this. I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I know. I was born in Fallsby, West Virginia. <laughs> and I went by where I was born last night, about 1030. I was born in a cellar at home. Delivered by Dr. McGraw. We had one bedroom for my sister, myself, and my parents. We had a half bath and a kitchen. Seven and a half years we lived in that place. There was no welfare. There was no food stamps. There was no safety net. But I always had plenty to eat. Because every time I asked for seconds, my dad would say, no, you had plenty. But the reason I was born with a silver spoon, my dad had only gone to the third grade. That's all the education he had. But why was I born with a silver spoon in my mouth? Because I was taught by my parents that life's a matter of making choices, wherever you are, good or bad, because of choices you make. See, there's a rule of life that says you're either growing or you're dying. The tree's either growing or it's dying. So's grass, so's a marriage, so's a business, so's a person. Doesn't have a thing to do with age. My birthday candles cost more than a cake. <laughs> but it has everything to do. Am I trying to get better? Am I trying to prove we got on top? You say, you know, this is pretty good. Let's maintain it. Let's not take any risk. We finished second in the country at Notre Dame. Everybody called me an idiot. Guy finishes last in medical school. They call him doctor. That doesn't seem fair. When I left Notre Dame, I never thought I'd coach again. Where do you go from Notre Dame? According to my mother, you go directly to heaven. You sit by the Pope. You, you don't coach anymore. <laughs> and then I went to live in a town where the average age was deceased. <laughs> and what I found out, I wasn't tired of coaching. You have to have something to hope for, something to dream. And even though you've done great things so far, what's going to happen now? I want to give you a simple plan. This is not something I talk about, it's something I believe, and it works. And I wish that I had learned it when I was 21. There's only three rules you have to follow. Law number one, do what's right. Do what's right and avoid what's wrong. If you have any doubt, get out the Bible. There's never a right time to do the wrong thing. And there's never a wrong time to do the right thing. Rule number two. Do everything to the best of your ability with time allotted. Everybody can be the best you're capable of being. And I want to tell you, if you want to fail, you have the right to fail. That's what's great about this country. You do not have the right to cause other people to fail. Don't blame anybody else, but if you get an education, you're willing to work and overcome problems and difficulties, in this great country, you can amount to something but just genuinely caring about people because everybody you're going to meet the rest of your life needs a smile, needs a kind word, needs an encouragement. Because see, when you do the right thing, people are always going to be able to trust you. Trust, commitment, love. Because those are the three rules I had for my children, my team. My greatest accomplishment is not coaching, not TV, not speaking. The greatest accomplishment is my family. And I'm very proud of it. You can't take your money to heaven, but I'll tell you something. You can sure take your children to heaven with you. I leave you with this very last thought. <laughs> very last thought. Want to be happy for an hour? Eat a steak. Want to be happy for a day? Play golf. Want to be happy for a week? Go on a cruise. Want to be happy for a lifetime? Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Bye -bye.